Okay, so there has been a lot of pseudo lawyers who are not licensed, who did not go to law school, and they're saying things about the reserve list, which frankly I don't believe is true. Now, as with any case, there's not a simple black-white. There is a lot of gray, so I'll put that out there. That in any case, you know, there's some pretty crazy cases, and the ones that you learn in law school are the crazy ones, where you think, hey, this guy's going to lose, and he ends up winning his case, or this guy's going to win, and they end up losing their case. So nothing is guaranteed, but with that being said, I can guarantee something. It will be very expensive for someone to sue Wizard of the Coast, which is owned by Hasbro. Hasbro is a billion-dollar company. I'm very familiar with the law firm they use down in Houston. In fact, previously, I've talked to that law firm, and they are a huge, very powerful, very expensive, incredibly intelligent law firm. One of the biggest in the U.S. is the law firm that Hasbro would be using. For someone to take on Hasbro, sue them for the reserve list should they violate reprint the cards, is insane. They would have to hire expert witnesses. They would have to have a judge that would even understand what. When you have a contract, there's many different types of contracts, but typically speaking, it's a contract between two parties. Both parties need to sign that contract. There must be compensation on both sides. My argument is, even if somebody could win, who would actually sue Wizard of the Coast? Because they would cost millions of dollars to do so. I mean, Discovery would be a pain. Uh, They would dump Discovery on you. When you watch those law movies that a lot of you non-lawyers watch, so I'm going to tell you my background. I went to NYU. I worked at the largest Chinese IP law firm since I was 18. When I graduated NYU, turned 21, I passed the Patton Bar exam. As to this day, I don't know anyone younger who's ever passed that exam. It is an extremely difficult exam. The people taking the exam, they all had PhDs. The guy sitting next to me taking the exam had a PhD in some type of engineering. I then went to William Mary Law School, which was a top 25 law school. I passed my bar exam in New York State. And I'll get into why New York State is considered one of the toughest bar exams to pass and one of the more useful ones internationally, if not the most useful bar exam. That's why everyone wants New York. If you ask any international student uh, who is who's studying for the bar exam, they're going to take New York. They're going to take New York. Because if you want immigrations, you want patents, that is the one that you want because that's the one that people are looking for internationally. That's the one they give you the most respect on to your name. So I'm an actual lawyer. I passed a New York bar exam sometime that summer, but then was com- you know, actually passed and there was an interview process. I got my little certification, if you will, to practice law in January 2013, so it has been a long time, a long time, since I've been a lawyer. I am not these random effers who pretend to be lawyers online. That's not me, okay? I speak at patent litigation events very frequently. I speak at law events very often as an expert in my field. I'm here to tell you, and this is the honest to God truth, nobody's going to sue them because no one has the money, no one has the time. This case would take a year quickly, maybe two to three years if there's continuance. Now that COVID hits, maybe this takes five years to finish. And you have to prove damages, and this is what I learned. It's going to be very difficult you think reprinting a reserve list card would tank its price, right? Not always. I tell you about the story of Tamagoyf. Tamagoyf, when printed the first time, not the 10th, 15th, 20th time, the first time, the card doubled in price. 
Because what they found out was, hey, you know what goes well with the Tamagoyf you just pulled? Free other Tamagoyfs. And that is my understanding of what could happen. So you would have to, A, have massive resources. You need to hire a paper expert. That's coming out of your pocket. You would need to hire ink expert. You would need to prove damages. You would need to pay for a very, very, very... I have met and talked to the Hasbro legal team. I talked to their division in Houston. I know the law firm. I can t- tell you the name of the law firm I dealt with. It is a huge law firm. It is a gigantic law firm. And they're not, <laughs> they're very intelligent and they're very good at their jobs. So you would need at least a decent team. So instead of one lawyer, you probably need a team of lawyers because they will have 10, 20 lawyers on their side and probably like 50 paralegals. The idea that, oh my gosh, this contract that no one signed, that the people who, (laughs) the people the contract was made for were magic players at that time. So to even find a person who would sue, even if you had the money, right? To find a person with standing would be somewhat difficult. (laughs) They would. It would. So the idea that these people cannot reprint the reserve list with their billions of dollars and their massive legal team, they don't need to win. Most cases, 98% of cases are settled. The reason it's settled because it's just so expensive to drag out. It is Wizard of the Coast definitely had their legal team look at this before making the announcement. I would not be surprised if Hasbro had its legal team look at this. This is a step to reprinting the reserve list. I own a shit ton of Legends cards, as I've shown you. I own a shit ton of reserve lists. I say reprint it all. At some point in time, you know, I don't actually know. No one can be sure the damages. Like, I talk about damage. No one can be sure that if you printed a Underground C as a .001% chance in the collector's edition that your underground seas would go down in price. My argument would be, let's see what happens. Just like the Tamagoyf, initially, it could skyrocket in price. Because you know what goes well with one underground sea? The other nine dual lands for EDH or a playset of them. That's what happened to Tamagoyf, the initial. So I, as someone who owns a shit ton of reserve lists, I want them to reprint it. I'm going to sell it all in the first reprinting. And I'm going to probably quadruple my money. (laughs) That's why I'm not worried. I mean, this is good news for me. I own a lot of legends. You know what people are going to do? They're going to try to make a legends collection. These very wealthy individuals who want to make collections, they're called collectors. I know. We we only talk about investors, right? Investors. Rudy Chan, investors. Man, I, I... There are people out there who, once they open a few of these, they're going to want to create a whole collection. But they're not going to have money to continue to open because that would be insane. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But that would cost a shit ton of money. But there are going to be people who, after hearing this, want to go out and get a whole Legends collection because they hit a few big cards. Hey, man, I'm willing to sell you my collection. And there are going to be people like me. I want a playset of this stuff. If it hits the secondary market... Yeah, that's good for me because now I can pick up stuff for cheap. When I mean, it's not even the price. It's the availability. Try to pick up a playset of some of these cards. There's nobody with a playset. Maybe this guy's got one, this guy. But as soon as you buy one of them, the, the price of the other ones go up in price because there's so few of them that the, every other seller is like, oh, my gosh, this one's sold. Now, now we got to you know raise our price. Like If you've ever tried to buy these older cards, it's annoying as F, right? Because you don't. A, no seller is going to have four copies of Abyss. No seller is going to have four copies of Tabernacle, right? If you want four copies. Again, that's kind of a weird card, but it is what it is. I think this is good, but don't tell me, you non-lawyers with no degrees, no education, no... I mean, I don't want to think... I don't want to make it seem like you just can't Google some of the information, but you don't know the reality of a lawsuit. The reality of a lawsuit is it's very expensive. You need experts in everything to prove any little point. 
And most importantly, you need a judge who is willing to understand. And this is going to be one of those weird topics that a judge is not going to understand. So you're going to need to spend a lot of time explaining. Remember, you're the plaintiff. You're suing them. It's your burden of proof. Wizard Coast doesn't have to do anything. They don't need to prove their case. They're the defendant. You're the plaintiff suing them. The burden of proof, initially at least, is on you. So good luck with your millions of dollars, right?